Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do birthday parties. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. I, I can totally do the truffle shuffle, guys. It's not a problem. Whoa, hey, uh, call you back. What's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, a.k.a. Barnacles, and I've got an unboxing for you today. Man, I'm sick and tired of having shitty audio in my videos, just like I do right now, so it's time to unbox this Zoom H4n and try to step up my game, provided I can figure out how to use it. Alright, well as you guys know from watching my other videos, I have had some audio problems in the past and I've straight up lost shit because of this stupid Rode VideoMic Pro that I have on my camera. The LED on it was burned out when I received it, so I never know when the battery's low, so it just dies in the middle of shooting videos and I lose tons of stuff. So instead, I decided to get an audio recorder that's standalone that has built-in microphones that I'm going to give a try, but I also have another microphone I'll be reviewing that I'll use in tandem with this so that I can record multiple audio feeds and pick which ones work best in my video. So let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. This is the Zune H4n uh, audio recorder. So let's go ahead and crack this open. I picked it up from Zzound. Uh, empty that out. Looks like we have manuals and software. Um, the cool thing is it comes with software because it also works as an audio interface. So you can actually plug it into your computer and use it as a standalone sound card, which is really, really cool. All right, looks like we have a case here. We have a memory adapter and a two gigabyte micro SD card. That's pretty badass that it actually comes with memory. Um, looks like it has a handle. Urgh right here that you can screw into the bottom so you can go out in the street and shove this in people's face and be like hey what do you got to say hey hey yeah that doesn't look threatening at all it looks like a fucking star trek phaser pew, 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 pew. <laughs> all right so the handle um uh, yeah i don't don't really know why it has that but i guess if you want to hold it in somebody's face you're going to need that um, and it looks like it came with a power adapter. Now this is cool because I wasn't expecting this. It didn't really say in the specs that I was reading that it came with one of these. I thought it had to be buy, bought separately. But uh, sure enough, there you have some external power, which is great because this thing will chew through batteries if you plug in an external phantom power microphone. Um, at least that's what I read. Uh, looks like we're done with the boxing over there. So this is the unit itself. Probably should have showed this to you a little bit earlier. But, uh, and it's got some cool plastic coating that I just removed so we can scratch it all up. But uh, this is the Zoom H4n handy recorder. You can see how small it is in my hand. It's not, actually not that big at all. It's got two inputs on the bottom that can handle half inch jacks or uh, XLR jacks, which are really cool. And on the back here, it has a place to plug in an external microphone with an eighth inch mini jack. And it's got a headphone jack for monitoring which is really, really cool. And you can also connect a remote control to it. I'm not sure if it came with it. Maybe it's in this case, we'll see. Um, but you can also see here it has volume so you can listen to playback and see if your audio is clipping. Um, if you don't have headphones and you also have a USB jack so you can plug it in the computer and use it as an audio interface. Um, it's got another plug here on the bottom. I think that's power. Yep, that's the power plug. Uh, some of the personal recorders I've seen, the microphone jack shares a plug with the power, which I always thought was stupid. So that's actually really, really cool. Then on the back you opened up, it looks like it just takes two AA batteries. That's it. Um, it feels incredibly well built. I like the texture of the material. It's got kind of that rubberized surface, so it's really easy to hold on to, and it's not going to slip out of your hands when you're all sweaty and you have, you know, people chasing you because you're trying to record them. Uh, I've heard the microphones on this thing are actually really, really good. Um, I can't wait to actually try them. Uh, but you can rotate them. They actually twist. So you can rotate them to different positions to pick up audio differently, like to change the audio envelope that they pick up. So play around with that a little bit and see how that works. And, uh, and it's got a scroll wheel here with a click to operate the menus. It's got a record level button, so you can very, very quickly change the record level for each of your microphones to keep them from clipping. Um, which I find completely valuable because if you guys have listened to a lot of my videos, I have a lot of clipping audio. And you can't save it once it clipped. So it's nice to be able to have a meter that I can visually see while I'm recording now uh, to determine if that's happening. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, open this box right here and see what's inside. This carrying case feels cheap as Taiwan, but that's okay. Um, I probably won't use it. I'll probably just put it in my camera bag with the rest of my gear. Ugh. Looks like it comes with the USB cable, which is nice. 
you know, it's not like I don't have 10,000 of those already, but it's nice that they included it because not everybody has 10,000 USB cables laying around. Um, and, oh, nice. It comes with a microphone sock right here that you can put over the top. Doesn't really feel like it's a very custom fit, it's just kind of a generic wind sock that you can put over the top. Kind of looks funny. <laughs> Uh, so when you're recording outside in the wind, it can cut down on some of that. So I doubt I'll be using that much here in the man cave. So, all right. So that's pretty much it for the unboxing, guys. So let's go ahead and plug this thing in and see how it sounds. All right, guys. I got the Zoom H4n connected to power here down on the bottom, and I just have it on a little stand on my desk that screws right into the back of it. And I went ahead and put the memory card into it. So you can see here, it's all ready to go. You can actually click a button on the side and go through the menu. You can actually tell it, you know, where you want to record, look at the tools, select play modes. You can even tell it you want it to be a USB device, and then it becomes an audio interface for the computer. So to record, it's really simple, depending on whether you want to use external microphones, you can push these buttons down here and activate which microphones you want to record from, or you can use the internal mics, which are up here at the top. So you can see the signal there showing we're getting some clipping. So go ahead and push record, and now you can see your levels as they're going it's not actually recording yet and then you can alter your levels just with the button on the side to get them right where you want them so now you can help get out some of that background noise and then to start recording you just hit the little play button here and you go this is a test we're just testing to see if this uh, zoom h4n works and then we're gonna go ahead and hit stop save the file and then we're gonna hit play play button here and you go this is a test we're just testing to see if this uh, zoom h4n works and then we're gonna go ahead and hit stop and that's just the internal uh, the internal speaker, which sounds like absolute crap. Um, so that's pretty much how you do it. If you want to hook up an external microphone, you just like I said, you just hook it to the jacks below. Or if it's a standard like lapel microphone or something like that that has a small one eighth inch jack, you can just plug it right into the back. All right, guys. So I want to do a little testing on the different microphones that I have on here. So I have the Zoom H4n connected right next to the camera, along with the Rode video mic and the internal microphone that's on the Canon camera itself. It's a 5D Mark II Canon. So I can actually see the levels from my voice right now registering. So it doesn't look like I'm clipping. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through each one of the microphones so you can hear what I sound like. I'm at a distance of approximately, let's say, four to five feet from the camera. So this should give you an idea of what they sound like. So here's the first audio clip. This is what I sound like just using the camera that's built in, or the, sorry, the microphone that's built into the Canon 5D Mark II. Um, so let's just go through and do some do some numbers. One, two, three, four, five. A, B, C, D, E, F. Testing one, testing two, testing three. All right, that's the internal microphone. Now you're hearing me on the Rode VideoMic Pro, which is on top of the camera. So let's go through some of the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A, B, C, D, E, F. Testing one, testing two, testing three. All right, so now we're using the built-in microphone on the Zoom H4n. And uh, right now I have the pills turned out, whichever mode that's in. We might, we might try them in both orientations. But let's go ahead and go through some numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A, B, C, D, E. E, F. Testing one, testing two, testing three. So now you guys have a demonstration of all three of the microphones that I have connected and you can kind of judge the quality of each one and I'll try to figure that out in editing. All right, so let's check out some of the other features on this unit. Now that we see what the quality is of the internal mics, which is actually really good, uh, it feels very, very spatial and sharp. Um, now let's go through the menu. So. One of the things that I really, really like about this is it's compatible with my MMX 300 headphone mic, um, which is great. So I can use these headphones for a monitor for this device. And these require PC power on the mic port to work. So they don't work with other things. Like for instance, I have a tube MP uh, mix amp for my computer and it doesn't power these. So I have all kinds of problems. This actually allows you to go into the menu and you can go down to plug in power down here and turn it on. So turning in plug-in power allows non-powered uh, non PC mics to work with this thing, which is fantastic. So right now I have the microphone plugged in in the back and I have the speakers plugged in on the side and I can put my headphones on. 
And right now you can hear me on the internal mic or, or on the microphone on the headset. So this is this is what you're hearing me on right now while I'm going through the menu items. So if we go through here, you can also turn on phantom power. So if you have microphones plugged into the bottom here, you can go ahead and power those. And you can even support 24 or 48 volts, which is cool. A lot of phantom power things I've seen only support the 48. Um, you can also switch to mono mix if you just want, you know, just to record on mono. Um, you can even enable and disable individual features like the monitoring if you want the monitoring on or off. Like right now, uh, when I'm talking in my headset here, I can actually hear myself crystal clear through, through the earphones in real time, which is actually a really, really cool feature. Um, you can also enable low cut filters on this and limits. Uh, it's actually very, very configurable. The menus are really intuitive and e easy to navigate. I haven't had to read any of the documentation yet to like figure this thing out. Um, so now if we back out of the menu here, that was just for the input options. You can also select like file folders and names. So if you're recording multiple projects, you can put them into different folders on the SD card, which is really cool because that way you can keep everything nice and tidy. And let's say you need to do audio sync later. Like right now what I do is I use, I use a technique where I just clap like this and it picks up on the camera microphone and it picks up on my headset mic and then I can sync it up in post production. You can also use time codes and stuff like that, but honestly, I'm I'm too amateur to figure that stuff out just yet, but one eventually I'll get there. Um so you come down into tools. If you have instruments and stuff, it has metronomes, tuners, all kinds of tools inside of it. Unfortunately, I don't play any instruments really, so all that functionality is probably going to go to waste on me. Um, you can change the play mode. If you go into the system settings here, this is really cool. You can set the date and time so that your time codes are accurate. Uh, the backlight on the screen, um, battery information, the version of the firmware. Um, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here that you can look at. So if we back up the menu here, let's go back down. Uh, SD card information. Now USB is a really cool option uh, right here. If you click USB, it says, uh, oh, because I'm recording right now, I can't go in there. So I'll just explain it to you guys. When you go into USB, you can choose file storage device, which connects it to the computer as a hard drive, and you can basically use it as an SD card reader. Or you can select audio interface. And if you do that, it just automatically loads and works in Windows 7 and Windows 8. And it shows up as both a microphone and a speaker in your mixer settings. So you can basically play a video game and have the audio come out through here as an audio interface into your thing and have the microphone go into the computer. So this is basically a complete sound card replacement. What I like it for is when I'm using my bare dynamic headset here, um, I route everything through a mixer board in my room. And right now to power the microphone, I'm having to use an Astro mix amp just to supply power for the microphone. Since this has internal power on the microphone port on the back, I don't have to do that anymore. So I'm actually really stoked to use this. Uh, so then we can go down to mode. Uh, because I'm recording, I can't go into mode either. But you can change absolutely everything that you want. You can see here's the meter as I'm talking. Uh, another thing I like is you can change the mic level. Like you can see here, I'm getting quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter. You can watch your meters as you're talking and make sure that you're not clipping. And it's, it's big enough of a display that you can see it across the room. Um, which I really like because whenever I'm recording, I can never see the, you, the, the, uh, view meters on the back of my 5d Mark II, And this solves that problem. So now I can see this and I can make sure I'm not clipping and that my audio is as crisp as possible. Uh, coming through here, you have some options for folder, file, speed, and wave, and MP3. So if you click, again, now recording. Since I'm recording, I can't show you guys half the functions. That's like the chicken and the egg joke, right? But you can basically select different formats, whether you want 48 kilohertz, 96, kil 96 kilohertz, uh, 44, mono, stereo, whether you want MP3 or wave, you can select all of those options. And it's super, super intuitive to use. And because it has a speaker built into it, if you're out on, you know, out somewhere, you can at least play it back through the speaker just to make sure that you got the portion that you wanted. Um, or you can hook up headphones like I have right now and just play it back through there and it works great. So guys, this is actually a really full featured device. Again, you can use the internal microphones. You can connect two phantom power microphones and a microphone in the back. So realistically, it's a four track recorder if you want. And plus you can USB it in the computer and it's a full sound card replacement. So you can use it in your audio editing software for taking samples and the audio clarity is phenomenally good so this is like if you have a guitar or music instruments and stuff i think this is an awesome investment for me personally this is my insurance plan to make sure that i can run microphones off the camera and i don't have to rely on my canon 5d mark ii to always record the audio and i don't have to rely on my rode video mic to not have a dead battery halfway through because this one gives me much more of a better display and i can run it off ac power which i can't do with my rode video mic 
So I hope this was a good demonstration from an amateur point of view on the Zoom H4n and some of its capabilities. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and just leave them down there in the comments. All right, guys, this is a final test to show you the phantom power and the XLR inputs on this thing. I went ahead and connected my Audio-Technica A2020 uh, condenser microphone that I have here and I enabled phantom power and it's a mono microphone. So I went ahead and enabled mono mix on the Zoom that you can see here. And I was able to very, very easily adjust the mic level so that I'm not clipping and I'm nice and clear and I can monitor myself in real time through the headset. And uh, when I do voiceovers and commentaries and stuff like that, I generally use this microphone because it's just a lot cleaner, helps me cut out some background noise and stuff like that. Uh, so I hope this video gave you guys a pretty wide array of what the Zoom is capable of. Um, it's pretty much like, it's an amazing solution for a whole bunch of things. Like the one thing I really like about this is now I can just plug this into my computer via USB with my headset on that I have here. And now I can use things like TeamSpeak and Skype and everything like that. And, uh, and the headphone audio going in should be really, really crisp and clean. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I like the fact that I can actually hear the mix through the headphones while I'm talking. So a phenomenal, phenomenal product. It's awesome. It uses SD. For some reason, they send you a micro SD card with an SD adapter, which I thought was kind of funny because it uses a full-size SD card. But, uh, you know, it just, it just makes it that much more versatile that you can now, you know, fit it in two different type memory slots. The menu is very, very easy to navigate. As you can see, switching between your microphones and setting your levels and your files and your folders and everything, it couldn't be more intuitive, to be honest with you. This thing is just absolutely fantastic. So um, I'm completely pleased. Uh, I also got the shotgun microphone, which I'm going to be doing an unboxing and a review of next. And uh, you guys can watch that in the next couple of days. Um, but the internal mic on this is actually really good. It's 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 a little bit uh, compared to the Rode video mic. It's got a lot more treble to it and it's a lot sharper. But the stereo on it is kind of cool. It gives you it gives you a much larger room perspective, um, especially when you have it placed a ways away from you, like five feet. I was actually pretty surprised. It kind of just gives you this this uh, feeling of space. So with a little bit of audio editing and stuff like that. Um, by pulling in multiple streams, like for instance, on this, if I want, I can configure it to record from this microphone and the internal microphones. And then I can either combine those two and post processing and change the levels and everything to get the right audio that I want. So it's just nice to have options. Um, and so far it's a fantastic device as a hunger had any problems while I've been shooting this video. And so far it does exactly what I needed to do. And, uh, this video is a demonstration of that. So guys, I hope this gave you a nerdgasm. Um, there's going to be, you know, more photography stuff coming, uh, on the channel and unboxings of that nature, because I'm just trying to get better equipment so I can make better videos for you guys. The fact that I've got so many subs now and the channel has been growing so fast is pretty much an indicator that you guys are enjoying the channel, or at least I hope you are either that, or I'm just an easy target, but you know, irrelevant. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing this for you guys and I'm going to keep on doing it for you guys. And I'm going to try to just up my game a little bit so that you guys don't have to like, you know, listen to popping, cracking audio and stuff like that and blown out images. But, uh, just doing my part to try to be a good uh, YouTube producer. So anyways, guys, uh, you have a great night day or whatever, wherever you are on this little marble we call earth and uh come over and check me out on uh, facebook and twitter you know i love talking to you guys and uh until next time i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like favor and subscribe it helps me a bunch also come follow me on facebook and twitter i love interacting with you guys